How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Oboe Shoes D&D. Today I've got another session scenario for you that I'm calling the Cliffside Caravan Kerfuffle because I couldn't think of an alternative for ambush to also start with a k sound. <laughs> ah, the classic roadside ambush. So, what we've got here. This orange is the main road because I don't have a brown marker for some reason. This green is the tree line. This purple represents a very steep slope, I'd say maybe 50 feet or 100 feet. As you can see, it's pretty narrow, so that translates into a very sheer drop into a very fast-moving river. So basically, the terrain setup is the high ground up here, steep slope, there's the river. So the basic premise is a caravan, represented by this little Lego car thing, is coming down the road. Oh no, there's a tree in the way. Hmm, I wonder what's gonna happen. That's classic, classic ambush setup. So maybe what you could do is the tree's not there yet. The caravan's coming down the road, then the tree falls, if I can arrange my foliage, falls in its way. So that's what stops it. I think that's a little bit more dynamic and more fun. Where are the PCs during this, by the way, you might be asking? Well, they can either be in the caravan, which makes sense, or they can be a little bit down the road and come up and stumble upon the caravan from either direction. They could come from here, and they might be able to use this, these trees as cover, or they can come from down there and just basically play it out like they would if they were in the caravan themselves. So, trees fall. Oh no, the caravan is stuck in the middle of the road. And surprise, surprise, a little red, oh geez, a little red tokens are back. If they want to stand up representing the bad guys. The bad guys, bandits, goblins, probably just generic forest bands are good, hiding in the forest. They're gonna start shooting, uh, crossbow bolts and archery bolts at the caravan. So I say caravan, obviously there's gonna be more than just one cart because another thing that's gonna happen in this encounter is the caravan is gonna form a wagon circle near the cliff and I don't know if this is gonna stick. There we go. This is just random pieces I have that will represent a wagon circle. You can imagine it yourself. It's not hard. You know what a wagon circle looks like. So the caravan is gonna form a wagon circle. So now they have the front is People with really good cover firing pot shots at them, and to their back they have a sheer drop. So they're pretty screwed. Uh, you may say, why don't they just retreat down this way? Well, maybe they can, but if they retreat, it's, these guys can just shift downwards across the tree line. Uh, maybe another tree falls. So basically just have the encounter play out like this. There's a cabin, caravan, yeah, caravan circle right there. So with the bad guys attacking from the tree line, and the caravan circle like this. It could get kind of stale. So let's introduce the members of the caravan, which will be represented by these blue guys. Oh no, we're in so much trouble. Uh, and the party. Like I said, the party can come from here. The parties will be these brown guys. The party can come from there, from behind this tree line that just fell over and see what's going on and formulate a plan of action. Or the party can be part of the caravan and they can just be in the thick of it, have a few of the caravan guys get picked off for dramatic effect while they're setting up. Like, oh no, this guy yells at you. He's like, oh no, help me move this. But as he runs up, a crossbow bolt goes through his head. Ah, and he falls off the cliff. Splash. Good way to remind him of the cliff, too. That was pretty dramatic. You should add that into it. So you probably have a back and forth going on here. Now the players, obviously, are going to say, we need to get these guys out of the woods, because the woods is going to give them excellent cover, or... The players are just going to run across the way into the woods, and I don't know how many spaces I have here, but you should make it enough distance here so the players can't just, like, dash into the woods. They should have to take an entire turn just to move to the woods and not actually get there so that they can't just use a dash action and go, boom, and just kind of bypass the no man's land right here because that's kind of what's deterring them from just popping out because if they pop out from here, oh no, everyone can just get him, but if they just dash across, then they can probably get there fine. So just make sure there's enough distance there to prevent any uh, cheesy strategies like that, unless they have a way to do it, like some kind of fast-moving potion or some deal. In that case, let them do it, because it's, I mean, getting into the forest is the key, basically. So yeah, this is pretty much a classic ambush setup. So what's going to spice it up? Well, the people in the forest, the bandits or goblins or whatever, have various flaming objects, like a flaming boulder. Not very big. Make it bigger. The flaming boulder can come down. It doesn't even have to be on fire. It doesn't really make much sense because it started in the woods. But you know what? It's, I mean, Teutoburg Forest. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Were those even boulders in that? I don't know. Were they even flaming? I don't know. They were in the room Total War to uh, launch drone. So they come down. Ah, phew, the boulders can smash a hole in this. If no one dodges it, 
DC's gotta make a dodge and deck save or whatever. They don't, ah, into the river. More boulders come down, destroying the palisade slowly. So this part's gonna be on fire and slowly being eroded by large objects coming out of the forest. Another thing you could do, I don't have anything to represent this because I just thought of it right now. Uh, sure, whatever, these wheels. Uh, giant log, that's, well, make it on fire, why not? On fire is more fun. So it's rolling down this way. Oh no, the log can take out a whole bunch of stuff. So things are gonna be rolling from the woods, slowly breaking away this and people better get stuck behind it. They thought they were safe with the log hit them and now they got hit into the cliff. So this slowly gets eroded over time. I just realized I destroyed the entire thing, but you get the picture. The PCs have to find a way to get into the woods and if they just leave the thing, they're gonna get focus fired. So they gotta get into the woods and once they're in the woods, I mean, it's the woods. You can, they can probably clear out whatever these guys are pretty easily. Not too, not too difficult. The main thing here is the terrain advantage these guys have and pushing this stuff off the cliff, which creates a hazard for the PCs who thought they were safe right here. Nope, your covers got knocked into a cliff and it's on fire and everyone's dead. Now, one way of seeing this solved is a guy took, a, he made a shield out of part of a caravan like a giant wooden shield and just said, everyone take the riot shield and we're gonna move in. So they got right across the uh, empty area here and use that. That was a cool maneuver. That's one way to get into the forest really easily. So yeah, basically the point of this one is to force the players to think creatively about how they're gonna go about taking out the guys in the forest. Cause taking out the guys in the forest shouldn't be that difficult. The problem is getting to them because there's gonna be a big empty distance right here. And even when they get close enough, they, these guys have like log and boulder traps waiting. They can just come down and get them. So people that prefer range and spell casting will be like, oh wow, I got a nice little setup here with the uh, caravan, but they don't because the logs and boulders will knock it into the cliff eventually or soon as possible. Because, I mean, I guess these guys would technically want to get what's in there, but maybe they don't. Maybe they're just evil and they want to kill people for no reason. That's basically what a bunch of D&D &D monsters do anyway, right? So yeah, they probably want some of the contents, but if they're getting destroyed, they're going to start taking it out. So yeah, the PCs uh, attack on a fortified position, and their position goes away over time. Uh, should go away pretty fast, because combats don't last that long. So yeah, that's the basics of this one. All right, that might have been a bit of a shorter one, but I hope you enjoyed the caravan ambush scenario. A little uh, twist on a classic, you might say. So uh, like, favorite, subscribe. If you like, favorite, subscribe this video. And unlike, uh, unfavorite, unsubscribe, unfollow if you hated this video. And if you also, if you hated this video, make sure you share it on social media saying how much you disliked it and tell everyone to watch it so they can all see how bad it was. And say, definitely don't subscribe to that guy because his videos are no good. This episode of Oboe Shoes D&D is sponsored by the LEGO Saturn V rocket set. Holy crap, this is amazing. If you have 120 bucks lying around, what could you spend it on? Your car insurance? Your build? Your mortgage? No, 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 no. Get this. Just get it. It's, it's so good. You gotta buy it. Just buy this thing.